How's it going? This is Pastor Glenn Garcia with New Hope Ministries of Central Denver. Um, just want to take a moment of your time right now and thank you for joining us. Here I am in the sanctuary of uh, our church and, and, and blessed to be here. Um, you know, we are called in this Christian walk to walk by faith and not by sight. We're called to do things that, that um, often go beyond our, our area of comfort. You know, so when we do those things, many times the Bible would instruct us to do things that we're not, well, like I just said, not comfortable with. And many times we're, well, I can't do that because I don't want to be fake about it. I, I'll wait till I feel it. But understand, by doing something that the Word of God tells you to do and not going according to your feelings doesn't make it fake. But it actually is the evidence of faith. It's because you believe. You know, understand, the Word of God tells us in Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, it says, His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In other words, what God's divine power, amazing, glorious presence and word and, and spirit has done for us is give us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It says, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So now, now, now that's a lot of words, but you know what? One of the things I want you to pay attention to, and even as you, as you read over this scripture, is the fact that God has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, and that he has called us, he knows who we are, and he's called us according to his glory and his virtue to be partakers of the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in this world through lust. Now, if we're going to be partakers in this divine nature, we must line up with God's word. So what does that have to do with, with um, walking by faith and not by our feelings or by, by what we see? It's because we've got to line up with God's word and understand this is an amazing passage to believe, to understand, and to stand on when you're going through something and you don't feel it. You know, many times I don't feel strong. I don't feel strength. And I, my body will feel weak. I will get tired. I'll get frustrated, aggravated, maybe even weak, weary, and, and doubtful in my own strength. <clears throat> but as I turn to God's word, I recognize that he has already given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. And if we are going to be partaker, and I understand he's called me to be a partaker in his divine nature. So regardless of how I feel, I've got to believe this word. Even if I'm, I'm weak, weary, tired, I've got to believe what God's word says, that God has called me to do things that are much more important than my temporary natural situation. I must be aware of the wiles of the works of Satan, of the enemy of my soul, that he would make my, he would want my temporary uh, uh, affliction, my temporary situation to define me and to keep me from moving forward into my purpose, which I was called into, which you were called. In Psalm 27, the word of the Lord says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In other words, whom shall I fear? There's no devil that I should fear. There's no circumstance or situation that I should fear. There's no um, person that I should fear. It says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Also in Psalm 27, jumping down to verse 13, <clears throat> excuse me, the word of the Lord says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So what that means right there, he says, I would have given up. Some translations say I would have fainted if I would, unless I would have believed that I was going to see the goodness of God. See, you've got to go through your circumstance, your situation by faith, not according to always what you feel. There are times where my faith is very well uh, uh, stirred up, that I have plenty of faith to go through, but there are much more times when I don't have the faith, the strength to go through, and that's when I must rely on God. That's when you must rely on the Lord. David says here in Psalm 27, verse 13, that he would have fainted, he would have given up, he would have lost heart unless he believed that he would see the goodness of God. And when was he going to see that? In the land of the living. In this time, in this day, in this period, here and now. He's not talking about a heavenly reality. He says, I would have lost heart unless I would have believed God was going to do something in my life today. So I want to encourage you that in the words of, of the Lord in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, it says that you do not become sluggish. But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I'm going to tell you something. I have inherited many great things from God. I have received many great things from God through the faith 
that I have lived out. And the word tells you, do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. The word would go on to describe some that have, that have uh, inherited those promises, but also look at those whose faith you admire, whose faith you appreciate. And remember, without faith it is impossible to please God because for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder that would seek a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. You know, faith is a very important factor in this walk. You're not going to make it. Here's the thing. There's no walk without faith. It's not easy. It doesn't always feel like uh, you're winning, but faith believes that you're winning. Faith believes that you're a conqueror. Faith believes that you are an overcomer. And you've got to remember that the one that called you is faithful even when we are lacking faith, even when we are faithless or less than faithful. So I'm going to pray for you right now, and I want to thank you for spending a moment with me. But let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, and I ask you to bless those, Lord God. Strengthen those. Remind, Lord God, and send your spirit to stir up those words that stir up our faith. Stir up the things that you have done previous, and stir up the words that you have regarding the situations we're in today. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name, your sons, your daughters, your servants, your children, Lord, would walk full of faith. Lord God, it's sometimes we think it's fake, but Lord, when we're standing on your word, when we believe what you say, it's not fake, it's faith. And I pray for that to be the reality, the revelation that we walk in this morning, this day, this afternoon, whatever it would be, in Jesus' name. Thank you for spending a moment with you, with me. God bless, and I pray you have a wonderful, a strengthened, a faith-filled rest of the day. In Jesus' name, amen.